one kids how are you and i hope you are fine today wow i'm so excited to be with you this morning and i hope you are happy to be in church okay so right now i want you to get your writing pad get your pen or your pencil call your friends together or call your siblings together and let's do church online all right have we done that i give you a few seconds to run grab your bible your writing pad your pen and let's go into praise and worship i want you to dance very well and i'll be right back after the praise and worship session Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that session of praise. It is always good to praise God. It's always good to express ourselves and our gratitude unto God. You can do that through saying thank you, Jesus, and through thine faith. Okay? So today we have a very interesting topic that we need to tell you. Our story for today is Samuel anoints David. You know, we've been looking, we looked at the story of Saul. And we saw how Saul was a disobedient king. God rejected him and he couldn't even say, I am sorry. 
you know that word i am sorry it goes a very long way they it still does not know how to say sorry god said you disobeyed me i reject you as king and it was just there like mm -hmm. you know so he thought nobody can remove him from the throne but god is all powerful so god woke samuel up and told samuel go and anoint a new king for my people israel so our topic for today is samuel anoints david i want you to get your bible and open with me to first samuel chapter 16 verse 1 to 13 as i read the story for you first samuel chapter 16 verse 1 to 13 the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil, and on your way I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? If so, hears about it, he will kill me. The Lord said, Take a high fur with you and say i have come to sacrifice to the lord invite jesse to the sacrifice and i will show you what to do you are to anoint for me the one i indicate samuel did what the lord said when he arrived at bethlehem the elders of the town trembled when they met him they asked do you come in peace samuel replied yes in peace i have come to sacrifice to the lord Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stand here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shammah pass by. But Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He's tending to the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. Wow, what an interesting story. I hope you enjoyed that story. So, so God has rejected Saul because he did something wrong and he couldn't even say sorry. And now God is sending Samuel that Samuel should go to the house of Jesse and anoint for him the one he, God, is going to appoint, the one he chooses. Because God already saw that Samuel will go and pick, according to the physical appearance, something that looks like Saul. So he asked the, um, Samuel, go to the house of Jesse in Bethlehem and I will pick somebody and the one I choose that's the one you are to anoint as king. And someone said, okay. You know, someone has been very obedient to God from his childhood. And someone went down to Bethlehem. When the elders saw him, said he came to offer unto God sacrifice, because that was exactly what God said he should go and do. When he got there, he got to the house of Jesse and asked Jesse to bring all his sons. And the first one came. When Samuel saw him, Samuel just felt, you know, I believe the first one looks like King Saul, you know, big, handsome, tall, looks like a king in his appearance. And the moment he showed up, Samuel was like, oh, behold, the Lord's anointed. And God said, shut up. I have not chosen him. I've rejected him. He's not a king. 
And Samuel was like, okay, the next, please. I believe at this time, Samuel just has to calm down and listen carefully to God's in instructions. God had earlier told Samuel, I will appoint. But when Samuel got there, he was a bit distracted by the features he saw in Eliab. And when he saw Eliab, he thought this was God's own. And God said, no, he is not. And the seven sons of Jesse passed by and God said, none of them. And I believe at this point, some were like, but God does not lie and had to ask Jesse, are these all your sons? And Jesse was like, oh, there's one left. He's tending to the sheep in the farm. So he's just the youngest. I don't think God is interested. And someone said, go and fetch him. We will not sit down till he comes. And when they brought David, God said, arise and anoint him, for I have chosen him. God had earlier told someone that I don't look at what men look at. I don't look at the physical um, things that men look at. I don't look at the height, you know. I look at the heart. I search the heart. And God said, this is the king I have chosen for my people. And their scriptures was fulfilled that the, 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 the son of God is going to come through the lineage of David as a royal child. You know, so God chose David, Jesse, and remember the story of Ruth? Jesse is coming down from Boaz and Ruth's generation. Hmm, God is heading somewhere to help man. Okay, so God chose David, and David that very day was anointed as king over Israel. And they said, the Bible said that Jesse, the spirit of the Lord, overshadowed David filled David and David became a new person from within. He's still the same young little David that was tending to the sheep of his father, tending to the animals in the bush. But David was filled with the anointing. He was filled. You know, now let's look at what are the things God saw in little David. Can a little boy of, let's say, 12 become king in your town? In your community, where are you watching from? Can a little child become the president? Let's not use the word king anymore. Can we become the president or the ruler or the king, whatever it is, or the governor, or where you are? Mm. I know we all say, no, that's not possible. When their daddy and mommies, you can imagine. They were daddies, they were mommies, they were young adults, but go choose a little young teenage boy and said he has chosen this one to be king. Hmm, wow. The ways of God are not the ways of man. Telling us that the things that we look at, that's not what God looks at. David was a very obedient boy. You could imagine even the father, Jesse, never even thought of him to be king. Everybody has abandoned the work in the house for him. He's the one in the bush tending to his father's sheep, keeping them. But while he was doing that, God saw that he did it wholeheartedly. God saw that David cared, even when his father, David could have just gone there and just wondered that this sheep, why are you doing this and hit the sheep or just do the things sharpishly and just leave there, whatever, nobody's watching, nobody's looking. But he did them carefully. Even when the, the lion came, he went after it, got the sheep, you know, he protected the animals like he owned them all. It wasn't like, oh, it was a family business. David did it. And it's not like the, the, the prophet was coming to David alone. He was the youngest in the house. So I believe the prophet wasn't even getting to him at all. But David was so much, in fact, he was an obedient boy, a lovely child, filled with wisdom and grace. And God said of David that he has found a man after his own heart. He loves him. God has a special love for David. That no matter what David did, even after, well, years after David later became king, he always have a heart. That heart from when he was a young boy, he always have a heart to tell God, I'm sorry, and run back to God. That was the thing God saw in David, that he was obedient. He was looking after little the sheep, he was protecting them. And God was like, hmm, if this boy is faithful 
in tending to his father's sheep, looking after the old animals, then he can look after Israel with all of his heart. Hmm. God looks at little things. Do not despise little things. Don't look down on little things. God prepare us for something big. He prepares us for something big through little things. If God wants you to be president tomorrow, you're going to start from your bedroom. How do you take care of your room? How do you tidy up your things? How do you pay attention to your book? How detailed are you when they give you assignments, when they give you homework, when we ask you, open your Bibles, let's read. Are you the type that just say, oh, let them just talk because mommy wants us to watch it. Let's just watch quickly and let's go over to the proper truth that we're watching or go over to... Uh, PJ Masks or something, you know, just go over to, you know, something else that you're watching and just get done and, you know, are you the type? Are you the type that will take your notes? You will study, you will open your Bible, you will pray, you know, and when maybe somebody in your class isn't feeling so well, you're so touched, you go back on your knees, you pray for that boy. Maybe a friend in your class isn't passing well and the friend is feeling like, oh, I'm not doing so well. What's wrong with me? Is it that I'm not as good as other children? And you, were, you, you know that subject very well. You're able to teach your friend and pray for your friend. God is looking at those little things. And I will always say that big things come from little things you do. Big things comes from little things you do. Those little, little things that you do will turn out to be a big one tomorrow. That was exactly what played out for David. David was just a little shepherd boy. Nobody recognized him. Nobody knew him. Even Samuel himself was confused when he got there. And Jesse himself was even confused. If God is actually choosing one of my sons, these are the sons that are able you, you need one. Is it just a little shepherd boy? Okay, let's send for him. And reluctantly, they sent for David. David came in and funny enough, that was the person God chose. God looks at the heart. He instructed Samuel, I will appoint. And he appointed. And he told Samuel, I don't judge by the physical appearance. I'm not looking at the beauty. I'm not looking at the things that you boys and girls look at i'm looking at the heart i search deep within the heart to see what the person's heart say is the heart full of love is the heart full of obedience and that was exactly what god saw in david's heart david's heart was filled with love was filled with joy was filled with laughter was filled with obedience was filled with i am sorry 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 all the way and god said this is the king if i tell him sit he will sit if i tell him stand he will stand it's an obedient boy that's all and god chose him have we learned something today we ought to be obedient and we ought to do those little things carefully and diligently the little things that daddy and mommy gives to you, your house chores, how do you do them? Do you just grumble, complain, and don't do it? That's wrong. That's not a good habit. You wake up in the morning, mommy tells you, tidy up your room, then you ought to do it. If mommy says, oh, there's somebody to help out with that, go read your book, then you ought to take your book. So that is your own farm. Do you understand? Maybe daddy and mommy doesn't have a farm for you to go and tend to the sheep, but daddy and mommy, they placed you in a school that's like a farm and they want you to read your books and they want you to sit on Sunday. Maybe there's no time we can't get to church. Do church online. Sit and take every lesson seriously. Then you ought to do it diligently. God is watching you. Even when nobody was there to tell David, David, well done. You're such a good, hard-working boy. David just kept on doing what he was doing. I, just, I can just imagine David going to farm in the morning. He's just going to be singing, jumping, happy, excited, move down to the farm. Maybe he has even given all the sheep and all the animals. He has given them names, you know, and then tends after them, just built his whole world around them. And at the end, God said, I love that guy. He is a good boy. He is a very good, 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 good boy. I have chosen him to be the king. I will wait 
till it's time and I will bring him to the throne as the king over Israel. It's my prayer for you and I that God will find us fit for his work. When God is looking for someone to rule in your time, you will be chosen in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to look at our memory verse. I want us to look at our memory verse. Our memory verse is taken from Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. I want you to say that. Say Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Whatever you do, walk at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for man. We'll take it again. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Say it again. Say Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Say, whatever you do, walk at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord and not for man. I love that verse so much. Whatever you do, walk at it. Do it with all your heart. As working for the Lord and not for mommy, not for daddy. If David had done it like, oh, I'm just trying to help my daddy, he wouldn't have been faithful in what he was doing, right? He did it with all of his heart. As one that was working for God and not for man. And God blessed his generation. And very soon we'll be entering the king of kings, you know? Jesus came from the lineage of David. God is a faithful God. So I hope we've learned something today. We've learned that big things comes from little things we do. Big things comes from little things we do. David was just busy tending to the ship, to the ships of his father, and God appointed him to be king as a young boy over Israel. And David was patient enough to wait till that time. He was full of obedience. David was full of patience. Now we need to finish well. King Saul did not finish well. We need to finish well. Whatever we do, we must do it wholeheartedly. So David did the job of a shepherd boy and he finished well as a shepherd boy. He finished well. So God looks at our hearts and not our outward appearance. God searches the heart of man and not the outward appearance. And God uses little things to prepare us for big things ahead. God uses little things to prepare us for big things ahead. I hope you've learned something today and you are blessed by today's lesson. I want you to close your eyes as we say a word of prayer. In Jesus' name, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your lesson that has come to us today. We we'll pray that it will help us to be good boys and girls for you. We want to be full of obedience. We want our hearts to be filled with your love in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you will help us to grow. And whatever we do, we will do it wholeheartedly as one that is working for God and not for man. Thank you, Jesus, for in Jesus' name of prayer, amen. And if it's your birthday from today till Saturday, I want you to jump up and dance and enjoy the song from us to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. 
Welcome back. Happy birthday to you once again. We pray you that God will bless you. It will increase you. You will increase in wisdom. You will increase in knowledge. You will increase in understanding. You will be filled with the right counsels at all times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We love you and we hope to see you again some other time. Bye.